All right, so we're gonna finish up um, the underpainting section of this with kind of the, sh the shadows, all right? And the biggest thing I always see people do when they paint realistic skin tones is they get to shadows and they immediately think they either need to use black or they have to use brown, all right? And both of those are gonna make a very kind of like dark, dark face, all right? And so I always actually like to use as much color as I possibly can. So we use the yellow as kind of our mid-tone. Eventually this is gonna be real, real skin colors, but I like to kind of build it up. It's gonna make the face have a lot more of a glowing look to it. Um, I'm actually gonna now come in with purple. So you should have a little of the purple that we laid out. Um, and again, I'm gonna use that middle brush, not the small one yet. And if we look at the palette here, you know, I'm barely touching purple and then I'm making like a little pile. I'm not scooping globs, all right? You don't need to paint that way. It's gonna to be too much on these little tiny portraits. So I kind of make a little second pile and I make sure that my brush is kind of nice and smooth. Um, I don't have big chunks of paint on there that are gonna to make too much of a, too much noise on there. Now I'm gonna look at some of my darkest areas. Um, we look at her face, you know, underneath her chin, um, a little in this area above her eyes along the left side. It's gonna be the darkest. So I'm gonna just to make sure it's not too bold. Um, I'm going to kind of just lay in some purple and again, I'm not just scraping it on there. Just like I talked to a lot of you on the last project, I kind of plot in a little bit of paint where I want to, to go. And then I come back in a minute and I kind of blend it out a little bit. So, and once again, guys, the theme is I have not been using uh, any paint thinner, right? Unless I'm cleaning my brush, I am not really grabbing any more of that because it's going to be too liquidy and you're never going to be able to control it. So now what I'm doing is I am just looking at my picture, you know, looking to see where it gets the darkest and I'm just kind of plotting in some of this purple. And what I, what I like about that is we use purple and yellow, they're complementaries um, and they mix. They're already kind of like not making just a, you know, a bright purple here. They're kind of making a brown themselves and it's just a better looking kind of color. Uh, ear, I'm just going to plot in some darks where I know it gets dark. We can kind of do more detail later. Um, it gets real dark up under the nose and a little right there by the glasses. Underneath. Over in this crease. Little corner of her mouth. Chin. Obviously this little cheek over here, and it looks like she's got a shadow right there, a little where her eyebrow would be. And obviously up here, and I'm gonna paint up into that hair a little bit. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe my brush off, and I'm gonna come back, and I'm gonna kinda of use what I already have out there, all right? I'm not gonna add any more. But now I'm really kind of looking at the picture and trying to kind of, you know, build up these tones. So obviously it gets a lot darker over here, but it's not as quite as dark as, you know, right on that spot. So that's why I didn't really want to put purple everywhere because I want it to end up looking darker in areas, but not as bold as where you really actually put the paint. So I'm going to spend a minute here and just kind of Mix these out and I'm looking at my picture and that's the biggest thing too guys is you always need to look at your reference photo. You can't just go off on your own course here. It's not gonna look anything like the person. You've got to know where those shadows are for it to look realistic. And remember that's our goal is we're trying to make these as real looking as possible. So obviously painting on paper uh, it dries out a little bit, which actually I think works to our advantage a little bit on here as far as controlling the amount of oil. But I'm just plotting in and mixing what I already put on there. Remember, I put it in little spots. And now I'm just kind of going around trying to match what I see on my photo. And just trust the process, guys, that eventually these are going to look real. Uh, right now, we're just laying in our shadows. Uh, now, I'm going to switch that little brush just so I can now come up around the eye and I can do little details where I know it gets a little darker. 
the top of her eye here kind of goes down this way. So anytime you're doing these small areas, switch back to that little brush. If you go too dark or too light, um, we can always, you know, reapply whatever color and kind of bring things back. But that's why if you guys really just use little amounts, you make those little piles, you're going to control how much paint you have much easier. So I'll just finish up this eye here. Glasses, there's a shadow um, and that's probably good enough for now as kind of our underpainting all right so I know it looks kind of crazy um, but our next step this thing will really start coming alive and you'll you'll start understanding why we go about kind of laying in that color so good luck with that and let's get ours to that stage